is now six o'clock, so I am going to officially, officially welcome Natasha Egan, the Executive Director of Museum of Contemporary Photography, who has been invited to chat with us today, tonight, um, in the context of being the uh, jurist for um, the curator for our Artist Perspective Annual Photo Competition and Exhibition. Um, the Artist Perspective um, project is um, meant to be personal work that uh, our commercial photography community has, um, has produced um, in the last year or so. We don't really have any rules about when the work was made, but it's always a really fun show. And um, let's see, Natasha, could you start by just introducing your um, background, your work, your how you got into this field of curating and talk about yourself a little bit. Um, sure, yeah, happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Brooke. Um, so I uh, am the executive director of the museum. I have uh, been at this museum for a very, very long time and have had a few uh, different roles here, uh, starting off as like the assistant to the uh, the director in the mid 90s and uh, then becoming the associate director of the museum and for the last 11 years, the, the director of the museum. So I've spent a lot of time um, at this museum and in the field of photography. I originally um, got interested in photography because I wanted to, uh, I loved it and I really thought I could be um, a teacher of photography. And so I thought, well, how, how do you teach photography? And so I learned you need to get an MFA in photography to teach it. And I, so I, that's what I did. So I have an MFA uh, in, in photography. I started at the University of Washington in Seattle. And then I came here to Columbia College and that's where I was introduced to the museum. And I also have an MA in museum studies. And I, I have taught for uh, many, many years in photography department, in the cultural humanities department, uh, different, in different capacities, mostly, uh, mostly uh, studio classes for like your, your thesis that you're, you know, a student producing their last body of work to graduate with or the graduate students. Um, I work closely with. Um, this, this semester I'm teaching a course called Museum as Studio. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of a pilot class where we're really using the, the collection and, and to inform how people, um, how artists make their work and broaden their experience with, with other artists and how other people relate to their theme and their subject and how they write about other artists work to help inform their own work um, and, and curate an exhibition related to their related to their own personal work. So it's a great, we, Columbia College, um, uh, I mean, the museum is part of Columbia College. So we are a teaching, we are an academic art museum. Uh, and so teaching is a big part of what we do as, a, as along with all of the, the exhibitions um, and we have a big collection. We have about 16, uh, almost 17,000 works of art in our permanent collection that is viewed by students all over the Midwest um, that come and view it. And of course, Columbia College students, but all the universities around. Um, and I just love photography. <laughs> I have a good, I have a deep passion for it. And um, I'm excited to always uh, look at photography as well. Um, can I, I'm just gonna ask this a sideline question. Are you always collecting new work for your um, for the collection? Just yes. That's, that must yeah. be a fun part of your job too. Yes, that's a very fun part of it. So mm -hmm. we we typically grow our collection uh, in two different ways. One is uh, we work a lot with emerging artists uh, because we are a museum that's down the street from the Art Institute. We also have the MCA here. We have we have many museums. And we have found that as, the, as our, you know, to work with subjects that are really happening, that people are grappling with right now, you know, with whether it's about social justice or can be anything about, you know, uh, war, 
poverty, issues of happiness, you know, sadness, <laughs> you know, we're doing a show about love. Uh, so the themes are quite broad, uh, but they really try to touch on stuff that's happening now. And we organize, um, we have gr a lot of group group exhibitions with multiple, you know, at least four to, four to 12 artists might be in a show. And we often acquire work um, for the collection from the shows that we organize. So that's one way that it, it grows. Uh, we commission artists to, to make works for an exhibition and then those go works go into the collection. And then we also receive donations um, from collectors of his more historical work uh, that we can't really afford. <laughs> and so it comes to us through donation. <laughs> and, um, so that's one, one way. Is it fair to say that you have um, been a, either a panelist or a single juror on lots of these different photo competitions that happen online and throughout the I, I have, um, yes, I have done it. Um, many, many times over the years and, and kind of all over the world, which is also really uh, fun to see what people in China or in, I, you know, I spent some time in Russia in like 2010 or something and 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 to see what uh, the artists are producing, what what are the, some of the trends or what, what people, you know, you just learn so much about the world through photography <laughs> and what, what, what people put, you know, turn into an artwork and put in front of you. And I, I've seen the entire world, almost. So cool. Yeah, and everybody, different people's impressions of where, of their own personal lives and where they live. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So it's, it's, it's fun. Well, the Chicago competition is open to the entire country. So, um, and I see already that we've got lots of um, members from all around, not just from Chicago. So um, it'll be interesting to see what you, what you like when you get the submissions. Um, can you just talk a little bit about your experience as a juror and um, just what you think uh, from the, for the photographer, like what they should be thinking about when they are submitting and the importance of doing these kind of exercises for our community, for a professional um, community? Yeah, sure. So um, I, I, it's fair to say that when anybody's a, a, a juror, um, everything is, uh, you, ha you have to realize that things are subjective and that every human brings their own um, experiences to what they're, to, to what they're seeing. So, so what I see versus what another juror sees, we will have very, um, different opinions, but sometimes lots of work rises to, you know, rises to the top for kind of a common, um, you know, a, a common, I'm going to take those off because they're really reflective, um, you know, that the, the uh, there's a, there's a, there's a place that sometimes work rises, whether it's a, a, an aesthetic choice, whether it's about a topic that is, um, you know, relevant at the time that draws you to um, to that subject. One of the things that I see, uh, because I see so so much work and I jury a lot of exhibitions, um, you there's there's some things that you see um, a lot of, and sometimes it's hard to know as the submitting photographer. Uh, whether whether your subject uh, is well like well documented <laughs> um, uh, or whether it's fairly fresh, so I of course I'm looking for um, something fresh and something that uh, maybe doesn't look exactly like everything else I've seen. I know that's really again it's objective and it's hard, but it's it's about trying to find. Um, to, to create a piece that's kind of pushing, pushing the boundaries um, on what a photograph can be, what it can, what it can do, what it can say, what it can convey. Um, and work can be emotional, it can be 
totally objective and cold and there's nothing wrong with that that's a that's a whole style of of of, of being kind of an objective view of something um, doesn't have to be emotional I mean it's just a it's just a huge a huge mix but I you know when I'm looking at works it's what it's what grabs me um, visually, of course, first, we are, we are all kind of image makers and image seekers and the world we're, we're, con we're constantly being communicated with through, um, through images. So I can, I can, you, you have to, you have to grab you, you know, there has to be something um, and it's impossible to tell you what will grab somebody. Um, and, but something has to, for me, there's gotta be something that makes me look a little longer because what happens when you're during a show, you have to, I have to be very honest. It's like, you kind of look at things a little quickly because it depends on how much there is. I mean, sometimes I've juried shows where one time I juried, I had to look at 20,000 oh pictures and pick a hundred, you know? And, and it's like, I don't have time. Oh, to yeah. study 20,000 pictures. Sure, so sure. I it look at really that, to, yeah. you really have to, so you have to catch that attention. And so you catch the attention by, by doing something that allows you to slow down, allows me as the viewer to slow down. And it can be the simplest thing. It can be um, something happening in the corner that is like, intriguing and you're like and it might not be like hey the focus is this picture of a portrait but it's actually the fact that there's this weird bookshelf behind <laughs> and I've drawn in to be like what am I learning about that person because of the books behind them I'm making this up now because I have a bunch of books behind me <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like looking at the books and so if you can get the juror not just me, anytime you're submitting anything, if you can get them to slow down, that's your first. Interesting. That's your first like hit. <laughs> Try to like figure something out, like something yeah. that does. If you have to figure it out, it means, hey, I'm staying longer on this picture, which means I'm slight, I'm intrigued and I'm going to flag it so that I go back to it. And yeah. there are many pictures that I just go, skip, skip, skip skip flag 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 uh -huh. and then so the, the 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 bad news is that if i've skipped you from the beginning i might never go back just how you do that visual of like skip 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 i'm like but, no i look i i mean but i i look at i look at every picture and I take it in and I have a photographic memory and I know what what that was and whether I need that picture in my mind or whether I have to move on. With any juried show, you have to edit, right? You have to bring it down to something. Um, and so you you you're it it depends. Like the one where I did 20,000, I was allowed to pick a hundred photographers for it because there, and it was so huge. But so, so that was very freeing, you know, to be like, okay, I'm gonna bring these, you know, I can't remember how many, I think it was 5,000 artists had submitted or maybe it was 3,000 artists had submitted or something like that. And I brought it to a hundred, but even a hundred is better than saying like, right. oh, you need to pick 10. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I had a lot of in the, with the hundred to, you know, the first, my first pass, I got it down from 3000 to 500 artists mm -hmm. on the first pass. And then the second pass, I then know I have to get the 500 down to 250. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's that, that kind of process. And how much in, in a show where you're the single jurist, are you thinking about how your selections are interacting with each other or how you're making a complete um, curated kind of show? Or do you just not, do you just miss that part of it? It depends on the show and how many artists. So the one with a hundred artists, I'm not doing that. I'm just going for the work that each one that I thought was the strongest 
work that I was seeing individually. Um, other times when I'm asked to jury a show with a smaller amount of artists, I will, because I'll have too many that I want to put in there, I will then start to think about what, what is, I don't want to. I don't want to have everything look the same. So you really want it to be like this. They're typically it's about that broad view, and so you, in in all of these, you you do sort of say like, well, that would be great if, um, you know, you don't want everything to be all black and white, or you don't want everything to all be color. You don't want everything to be portraiture. You don't want everything to be architecture. <laughs> Unless you're during an architecture show, I mean, that has a different thing. Right. So I I I. I tend to look for what the best work is first, and then it and then there might be some curating of of like oh well these two these two are pretty similar and I'm going to give one of them up. Right. So that that happens because the work is maybe too similar. Um, but no, I'm not in, unless it's really it's a, a theme I'm looking for. But when it's wide open, I try to keep it pretty pretty wide open. All right. That's pretty great. Okay, so I'm going to allow if anybody has questions, they can stick them into the chat. I'm going to keep talking with Natasha unless we get um, any specific questions from the group. But in the meantime, so far, I haven't noticed any questions. I'm trying to. Uh, nope. Um, so, um, and I can also give permission to anybody to talk and just to if you go into the chat or if you ask for to be unmuted. I will allow you to talk. I will give you that permission. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to um, bring up a subject with you, uh, Natasha, that's sort of um, kind of a local question in a way because I'm a Chicago photographer and I wanted to talk about the divide between the commercial photography platform and the fine art photography platforms. And um, uh, <laughs> I know that um, I go to portfolio shows through filter photo. I also go to portfolio shows through um, uh, the advertising community. And um, and they're sort of, they're in, in, in so many ways, they're exactly the same. And in other ways, they're different. And I often feel as though the difference has to do more with the photographer feeling that they have to show differently in each place. And I just didn't know if you were able to speak to um, like your impressions of evaluating the artwork from photographers from different, for, you know, that are, that are creating their work from different spaces. Um, so I, I don't know that much about the commercial world. What I do know is I have, I've worked with hundreds of people who are commercial photographers who also are art photographers. And many times um, you can see that they don't make the biggest distinction between their commercial work and their, and their personal work. It depends on, so some people are commercial photographers who are, you know, food photographers and they have to, you know, be under an art direction of the cookbook that they are <laughs> helping right. produce and, and you have a client and there's all these things. Um, but a lot of commercial, a lot of fine art photographers also end up in the commercial because of their style and vice versa. You have the commercial feed into because the commercial photographers often are more, more trained photographically <laughs> than some fine art photographers. And so you have a quality of the work um, can be higher with someone who's so well trained in the commercial world. Um, and but that sometimes it's it's hard to figure out because sometimes you might be used to, you know, working on 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 an assignment that uh, is for a client, and then you might be like, well, what's my personal project, you know? And and so I think that uh, everyone should kind of let it all go, and <laughs> they should embrace, you know, embrace it, in, embrace it all, 
And if you have a personal project that's fine art that you would like to um, explore, go for it. And if it has some of your commercial workings in there, embrace it um, because that's where your strength is and that's what's driving you. And there's plenty of complexities in merging those. You know, it's just having to think about like, um, is my personal work, uh, does it have like some depth to it? Am I asking a question? What am I doing with my personal work? It's fine to say like, I just love on my personal work to be on walks and take pictures of trees and nature because that's my personal and that's my space. Hey, that's your argument for why you're making this work and go for it and embrace it. And don't be like, oh, but I also do this commercial work. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Like, like, just embrace it. Yeah. And embrace going to filter and embrace going to, you know, printing work at, you know, at latitude and brace coming to MOCP where some of it might be overly conceptual or not. And just embrace the role of image in our society. What a great message. I'm so glad we're recording this. <laughs> um, okay, Jason, um, you have a question and I think I unmuted you. Oh, um, well, I didn't have a specific question yet. I just wanted to let oh. you know that the, the chat says it's disabled. Oh, <laughs> I'm so, sorry. I thought you had a question. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I would just say, I guess, based on exactly what Natasha just said, I'm more of a, you know, uh, commercial photographer by career. But the last two years, I've really been pushing the fine art photography. And I have felt very embraced by the fine art community, by curators by um uh portfolio reviews and i was expecting like there would be this um stigma about being a commercial photographer and so far and and i mean i put a ton of time like at least half my time the last two years into this world and i have found zero of that like everybody's been very open and accepting which is very um feels very nice that's awesome. Yeah. And again, like I always find that at the filter um, portfolio reviews, you know, you're used to seeing like big portfolio boxes and, you know, and then when you go to Palm Springs or one of the other ones, it, it's iPads or, you know, the presentation, I was going to say, Natasha, I mean, you're just looking with an open heart at work, right? I mean, you're, yeah, not, absolutely. you're not supposing that just because somebody comes to you with like, I mean, they could come to you with anything. If it was resonated, it would be a box of, I don't know, work prints or something. That probably... Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm seeing Karen uh, wrote a question about would, will you consider photo montage and use of filters for acceptance? Like, yes, I, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not about the, it's not, I mean, I said earlier that commercial photographers are usually better technicians in that field. But it's not about what you use, how you use it, what film you use, what camera you use. I could care less about any of that. It's just what message is coming across. What is the lat? What is the the final image look like? And um, is it is it is it gripping? And it doesn't matter. You can use as many filters as you want. You can like. But you could change it all. I mean, because it's fine art. So this is not this is not about, you know, there's no questions of like cropping. This is not a photojournalism conversation. This is not a straightforward documentary project conversation. Because when you're just looking at images in this kind of case, um, you you're you're just drawn to what the images are and do I want to know more about it? Um, and I don't know this process if it's if I'm only looking at images or if if people are also including like a little statement about what their project is. I don't know the answer to that. So, so this this for this competition, you'll just be getting images. So, so. purely images. So then it's really got to be like you just got to draw <laughs> me in <laughs> because I'll because I. Well, 
make up my own stories for the pictures <laughs> for sure <laughs> well it also it's tough too because sometimes you know if if those of us artists who are working on a series you know sometimes images have to do with you know a larger group of images so this is a particular um example of where the one still image and we haven't opened it up for video yet either every year we talk about that but there's no motion in this particular competition so that's another thing it's it's not it's it's a lot to have one image tell a, a bigger story so yeah well that's the same as the the really big one i did called the art of photography in san it was in san diego um that's a while ago now but where there was so many <laughs> where <it was> like <laughs> thousands Right. Well, I was in like a hotel room with three people during the thing, and it took us like two eight-hour days to get through all the twenty thousand pictures. Wow! And so, were that was it? Were you all doing it individually, or were you take or were you comparing? I was the sole juror. I just had assistants oh, helping yes. with right. process and all of it. This yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. It because it really is for us because we've had this. Um, I don't actually know how many years um, the APA has been. Chicago has been doing this artist perspective, but um, I've been involved for maybe five years, and I do know that there is. It's so interesting to see when we have had multiple jurors versus one single juror how the, you know, what we learned from, just what you said. Like you can see the ranking, and you'll have three different people who there'll be a few images that always get the yeah, top rise to the top. Yeah. Yeah. That just, just what you said, like to just pop out, but then beneath that, it's just, Random. Yeah. Place. it's just so all over the place. Cause it, it get it is, it's a personal, um, you know, it's very personal. Yeah. So. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, uh, so I wanted to do a little shout out or our members, and you're going to help me here, like come up with some ideas. Like I have had a lot of great experience at the Hyde Park Art Center with um, their professional um, pathways and um, professional um, courses and advancing, you know, fine art practice. Um, and also, um, and we talked a lot about filter photo and latitude. Um, and oh, and Hyde Park Art Center now has an open access um, program where most of their um, most of their courses and um, seminars are pay as you can, which is kind of exciting. It's the only place in the country that does that. So that's a little shout out. Um, also the APA is bringing back their success teams, which I think is a really corny name, but nobody has come up with an alternative because it's such a, it's such a fun um, concept. The success teams are, um, you get, paired with other photographers and you meet monthly and um, exchange tech tips, creative tips, professional tips. It's, it's awesome. So we're bringing those back and that's going to happen this. Um, you can go on um, the website and it'll tell you how to find out more about that and sign up for that. Um, I was just wondering at Columbia, what kind of sort of, I know you've got the MFA program, but do you have sort of professional uh, development? Um, you know, we, we, we don't really, unfortunately. There was a, a time maybe 15 years ago where we had some great continuing um, education courses that you could, you, that you could take in the, within the photography department. But for whatever reason, it, it switched. So now it's a very, um, we don't have the continuing education programs going right now. So it's just the undergrad and then the graduate programs. Um, so, you still have access to the uh, museum. Everybody has access to the museum. Right? I know. That's <laughs> the thing. Yeah, Except the museum. Inspiration. Yeah. So there. the museum, yeah. we, we have, uh, yeah, you, could, you can just um, book online a, a time to pull some works from the collection. And we have, we have people here who will pull works that you're interested in seeing like maybe up to 15 or 20 of them. So you can you can just book that online where you say, oh I want to I wanna see, yeah, I want to see these works from your collection. Um, and we work with you because some of them, a lot of them are here on site and some are not on site. And so sometimes we might say, you can't see that on. <laughs> so our entire, we were like, that, that's, it's too complicated because <laughs> You bring it because it's a big piece and we can't bring it for like a one hour print viewing as we call it. Uh, but we have thousands and thousands of pictures that you can absolutely see. 
um, as a as a group, as a membership group, you can you can come and we could do a print viewing and pull works out of the collection uh, to to talk about. Uh, we can do an evening program, all sorts of stuff. But the museum is we're we're we're, we're very um, excited to have people be excited to look at our archives, come to our exhibitions, come to our events. Uh, we have a lot of free. All of our programming is free. Um, our admissions is free. Everything's everything's free to do any anything here at this museum and everything's online. So I, when you say everything's online, do you how much of your um, collection is digitized? The entire collection. Oh, wow. So you, can okay. search the, you can search the entire collection. Oh, my God. So it's online and you can make an appointment to come in and see a Harry. You, you can pull out some of the works. I know to see some of those archival um, black and white photos in real life is very exciting. Um, it's like, Jason, did you have another comment? Uh, I had two questions. Um, one is how important uh, do you feel being related to contemporary issues like say gender issues or climate change or environmental issues, um, whatever it might be that's a contemporary issue is in, in work in enduring exhibits now? Um. So during and during an ex during uh, an exhibition is quite different than when you when you curate an exhibition with a couple artists. Um, so a lot of those themes are very important um, if we are going to put on a museum exhibition because again we're an academic art museum and a lot of our exhibitions are about. Uh, subjects that fall into kind of the curriculum and how you can discuss topics of yeah climate change or gender or violence like we've done we did an exhibition about kind of gun violence in the United States um, we've done exhibitions about refugee crisis all these different things usually through uh, contemporary art in this in this case um, it's a little more freeing and I'm not going to look at like every piece has to have a social <laughs> agenda. I'm also looking for, you know, you know, you look for beauty, you look for abstraction, you look for just what grabs you uh, design wise, graphically. Um, it's, it's really, it, it, I, 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 it, it's a mix because not all climate work, um, do you kind of understand by just looking at an image? Sometimes it takes the captions and complexity uh, to know what the what the what the issue is. But so the answer is a little bit broad in that when you're looking at lots of different work, um, yes, what's happening in the world today and how you convey that um, I think is very important. But if your work is not about social justice and it's much more about just design and emotion and human, you know, kindness, um, that's equal. Good answer. Um, Natasha, can you see the question that- I can. Um, it's about- so there's, a, there's a couple things I- um, What publications? Um, so the Chicago Artist Coalition has a great website for different um, competitions that you can um, apply for on an artistic side, on a photographic side. Um, I think that what Latitude and Filter both do very well is also, um, they have workshops throughout the year that really, um, talk about these different issues of navigate how to navigate certain competitions. Um, are there things to be aware of to judge the legitimacy of competitions? Yeah, there's a, a few things that um, I don't know about the. So, so you have to just think about. I'm coming from the 
the, you know, the, like the nonprofit and complete, <laughs> you know, kind of socialist side of the, the, the art world here in, yeah, in an academic art museum. Things out there, yeah. So, so one of, when you're thinking about legitimacy or ethics, um, there are some photo competitions that you have to pay a lot of money for to submit your work. And you just want to ask yourself, is that, is that worth it? Um, it depends. And, and I think you just need to do a little bit more research into the organization hosting it. And if you are willing to pay those high fees to get in, in front of certain jurors, like if it's a world photography competition or it's this, which ones are, are kind of valuable to ask yourself, um, depending on those fees. There are many things too that you can that you can apply for. Um, one of my favorites, and I don't know the pricing on it, uh, but one of my favorites is called Photo Lucida, and it's called Critic Photo Lucida is the host, and it's called Critical Mass. And I'm not sure what the cost is to submit, but it it gets you in front of it gets your work. Well, there's a few people who jury all the work to bring it down to about 250 artists that about 50 or 70, I can't remember what number it's at now, jurors see. So your work gets in front of a lot of people. And, and there's the, and that's a, that's a juried thing where all 50 jurors or 75 jurors, however many, um, the top 50 artists, um, you know, get ranked as the top 50 and the top three get photo books made of their work and they get a show at Blue Sky Gallery in, in uh, Portland, Oregon. And that's one of my favorite um, juried shows for the fine art to, uh, because so many people see it, see, see the work. Um, I think most of you might know about Filter here with the portfolio reviews. I think that's um, uh, there's, there's a cost to all portfolio reviews, but, um, there's, I think is they're, they're really trying to reach, um, artists, um, to participate and make it as accessible as possible. Um, and then there's lots of great, my, my other most favorite portfolio review. Well, there's two that are my favorites, but the biggest one is, is, um, in Houston and it's called, um, Photo Fest, it's every, it's every other year. And there are so, what the best part of Photo Fest is everybody's coming from all different directions of photography. The, the, you know, you'll, you'll meet doctors who have a passion and, and, and they have these great projects. You have commercial photographers who have their fine art projects there. Um, and you get, you get your work in front of galleries that are all over the place or magazines like Harper's or the New York Times. And, and they're just, it's, it's a really great. And what's really great about it is like all the artists that come together, there's these portfolio days where you all come together and, and it's really great. So um, if you ever have an opportunity, that one is a little more expensive than like filter. Uh, but they also have your 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 reach of globally of people who are looking at your work is much wider. Um, and the other one that's curated that's tighter, uh, but also really um, open is called Review Santa Fe. It uh, run by it's called Center in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And these are all things you can submit to. Uh, I think PhotoFest is the most um, open and there's so many of them. Um, so. So those are, but for resources, I would look to Filter and Chicago Artist Coalition. And I'm trying to think of, maybe Brooke, you can think of some other ones, resources. I, I, I feel like you're really, that was a really good answer. That was a really specific answer. I like that because there's so many. And I honestly, as a consumer of those, all the, um, you know, but there are, there are ones out there that are kind of exploitative. There are lots of ways that um, people try to zhuzh up their credentials to get you to pay money to submit to this and that. And there's just so many. So it's really nice to have you kind of specifically single out ones that are meaningful to you. Like 
that out have high quality. Yeah. But locally, I think um, I, I feel like we've touched on some really good resources mm -hmm. for the local Chicago. Um, okay, let's see. Do we have any other questions? How does a photographer? Oh, this is Karen. How does a photographer get to present work at the Museum of Contemporary Photography for consideration for exhibition or for their archive? Is there a formal schedule for that? Um, so we we kind of do a monthly curatorial uh, committee reviews. So you could you submit your work to uh, your portfolio, digital portfolio, to um, on our website on the about page it says portfolio reviews, and so you could you know you could or you could email me um, and I will pass it on to our curators uh, committee. Um, and we look at work about once a month um, and see what's going on. We have a few different opportunities. We have what's called the Midwest Photographers Project uh, that some people who are local or in the Midwest um, can kind of submit work for. Uh, we also have, have ideas of exhibitions that we're working on and it's been through those portfolio reviews that we might um, know that we're working on a show about a particular subject. And we might then at that portfolio review, see, um, see your work and feel like that it really fits in because it's giving us a whole nother angle that we haven't considered for our, the, the topic that we are doing. So there's been quite a few, uh, works that we have shown that have come through the portfolio. Um, other ways is, um, you know, like working with different galleries and, and there, there's, there's still kind of, I think this is in any field, uh, there is a network um, where if you are represented by a particular gallery, um, a gallery would write, you know, to us and say, hey, I started to represent this person. I think they're doing really strong work and this is what it's about. And that get, it gets on our radar um, that way as well. Okay, interesting. Um, uh, let's see, Sherry has a question, if you can read that. I, uh, she's a non-traditional photographer using mixed media on her work does not fit in a flat file. And the photo shows, and specifically ours. And this is a question that was asked to me by somebody else and I'll just editorialize for a second here. Somebody else asked about work that is more sort of three-dimensional. And my answer um, online was if the, if they can, if the photographer can digitize his work um, and put it into the competition, then we will display it in its three-dimensional form if it gets accepted. Is that, does that sound like a good answer? Yeah, I mean, we show tons of work that's not in a frame. Of course, I know it's a frame, but for our, for our IP, if for our APA, little, you know, little show that we do, and it's like our, you know, one year thing, and we have, and again, we haven't introduced motion. We, you know, it's very, yeah, limited. It's very uniform in terms of the way we present it. But um, I was asked this question just a couple of days ago, and my answer was, we'd be happy to show the three D version if you can have a digitized version to show to you so you can make your journey. So um, is is everyone submitting like I'm looking at each image or is somebody have the option to there's no submit, series no submit a series of image where one of the pictures can show the three dimensionality of it? Well I suppose that would be maybe that's something we could talk about. So but how many how many pictures do does each usually just one again the way the website works is like one picture you know upload one image you know upload one image so so i think that that's i think we're confined to just this uniform so maybe for next year we can um so anonymous like what are the benefits of showing your work in front of jurors? Um, I, uh, I might have, did I answer that? I think it's very important to get your work in front of jurors because it's the jurors that, um, like I just juried another another project and discovered, you know, 
at least five artists from that experience that I didn't know before. And okay, I, have, I have a question though. So, but, but in general, when you're looking at, a, at work, you don't know the name of the artist when you're reviewing it, right? It's not until after you've selected it that you find out who the artist is. Uh, it all depends on the, on the, each, on the project. Okay, each yeah. position is different. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you know the names because you have the names, you have their project statement, you have everything about them as part of it. Like critical mass, you definitely know the names of the people who I'm looking at. You you have their, you have 10, you know, 10, 10 pictures um, that are, you know, it's a portfolio. It's more of a portfolio. Um, okay. I see what it's different. Yeah. So let's move yeah. on. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, so, um, I don't see any other questions, but I have a question and this is just came to me um, um, because you mentioned that you have this sort of local, um, you know, that you do follow local photographers. What do you, what do you think about the photography community in Chicago? I'm really putting you on the spot here, unprepared question. What do you, what is your impression of the Chicago photo community right now compared to sort of five years ago or in relation to like the, nation larger what are do, what are your sort of do you have any do you have any insight or takeaways about what Chicago is like as a photo community from your perspective um so I haven't lived in LA or New York so it's a little hard to answer that question in comparison but I no, find I love that you, but you've lived here for long enough that you can I've li I definitely have lived here yeah. to see um, I, I am, I am very excited about the photo community here in Chicago. I think it's, I think one of the, one of the areas that drives it is that we have so many great universities here in Chicago and we have so many great, you know, kind of photography programs you know, whether you are at DePaul or the University of Illinois or whether you're at Northwestern or, you know, Art Institute, Columbia College, there's like a, a, a an energy. We also have a lot of people taking one of the best parts about Chicago, um, and this is not just for the photo world, but for art and restaurants and theater, is that because Chicago is a more almost a it's a little bit more affordable. You have you have people who can take bigger risks here in Chicago. And what you see with the bigger risks is people um, trying more complex, less, will this sell at my gallery? You know, trying more, um, well, taking taking a stand and knowing that I can I can try this here. And it's okay to fail. Like you, this is why we have some of the best restaurants in Chicago. This is why we have more theaters than anywhere because they can take the risk on showing it to a Chicago audience first before it goes to New York. Um, I'm talking theater in this case, you know, and, and photography, I get that same sense. We have a lot of galleries that are small startup, like let's go, you're in Pilsen and there's the, like, there's that you can get, you can find a community, you can build a community. There's so much going on with the photography world here. Plus when you add like the level of that history of commercial photography in Chicago, which has like such a deep history, Chicago is a photographic center. Um, and I think it's great, um, but mostly because you, we were a little more down to earth and we're not New York and we're not LA, but we do real work. And there's an authentic authenticity to it that I deeply appreciate. Ah, oh, again, I'm so glad we're recording this because that was a really great um, pitch for the Chicago art community. And I'm in agreement 100%. That was really nicely said. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so I think, um, let's see, Karen has one more question. We might be getting close to wrapping up, but could the museum, could the museum list upcoming exhibits so that a photographer can show work geared toward that theme rather than happening upon a subject that might be forthcoming in an exhibit? This feels like a, it's a pretty specific uh, question, maybe. Yeah, that's, we, 
uh, we're not, some institutions really plan their shows out like two years in advance. And, and although we do plan our shows out two years in advance, we don't, um, there's, sometimes there's things move around. And so we don't really post the exhibitions that we're working on until, um, uh, until we know that those dates are finalized. So that's, it's a little, it's a little trickier um, to say, hey, we're working on a climate change show in 2024. Um, although, so we're, we, we try, we keep that a little bit wider open. Uh, and we, so we're, we're, we don't really organize the shows unless we're gonna do like a, a call you know, so it's it's hard to, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not giving a great answer for that. But I, we just don't have it all planned out. We also have some, uh, you know, plans for some construction. And anyways, we have a, it's a little bit of a moving, we're in a, we're in a particular phase where it's, uh, where I, it's not that perfect to uh, submit work based on the themes that we're working on coming up. Um, all right, well, um, thank you so much. I'm gonna say that we have had a great discussion. I am so in favor of all of your support and thank you so much. And thank you for talking to us about blurring those lines and keeping open and experimenting and taking risks. I like, I like being identified um, as being part of a community that takes risks. I think that was, anyway, you've given us tons of insight and really great um, inspiration too. So yeah, great. Natasha, Natasha thank you. And we yeah, thank uh, you. I just remind everybody that um, we've got submissions are open for the artist perspective. Um, Natasha will be um, meeting with us one more time after, well, I, hopefully you'll be at the opening exhibit so everybody can meet you in person. April 28th. And also um, we'll meet with you afterwards. So you can just um, give us some feedback and takeaways from the submissions. And I think that'll be a really interesting time for people to ask specific questions too about maybe their work or anyway, it's a really, um, it'll be really fun to talk to you again. Yeah. And, um, and Yeah. And thank you so much for meeting with us and taking the time and yay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thanks, thanks. everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.